real hot. Uh, lots to update you on. Uh, lots of experts here today to also unpack some of the things I'm just going to give you the top lines on. Uh, the recovery from this tragedy is proceeding, and it's proceeding uh, extremely vigorously. As you know, the tragedy occurred on the 8th, uh, late. Immediately, we asked for support, and the world has stepped up. Our communities have stepped up. And before I go too far, I want to say how much we appreciate those who supplemented the things that we were unable to do in the early days. There are extraordinary stories all across Maui and our state of people sheltering dozens of individuals in their home, taking multiple families in uh, as some of these other services got online. So I'm going to break some of that down. Uh, I also want to uh, talk about housing at great length in a moment. So as far as the disaster, there are 99 fatalities that are confirmed. Chief of Police will get into some of these details. Uh, in addition to that, the search goes on. And he will describe the amount of uh, the territory that's been covered. It's more substantial than you were aware of yesterday. We've had leaders all across the board helping our people. First and foremost, food and water. Over a million pounds of food has been delivered, and services such as and supplies such as food, water, diapers, baby formula are going out. Chad Buck's been one of our heroes doing this. Also, a coordinated donation center has gone into place courtesy of Lieutenant Governor. We're so appreciative of her extraordinary work with Chad and with all of our state officials. We'd like to tell people if they would like to continue to support. Of course, we appreciate any generosities. Most important right now are resources, financial resources, through Hawaii Community Foundation, Red Cross, and so on. You've heard many times how important that's going to be for our uh, surviving families. So in addition to that food and tens of thousands of pounds of ice, for example, 57,000 pounds of ice that was delivered, we've begun much of the recovery for people in their daily lives. The things that you need to do now. If you are displaced from your job, you need to talk to the Department of Labor and Industrial Re uh, Relations. We have a UI, that's Unemployment Insurance Call Center. It's open 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please do that so you can get benefits to hopefully get yourself some resources right away. We also, I talked about the donations, but we have multiple uh, ways to get people into housing now. In just the last uh, two days, we've secured the following. 402 hotel rooms now available to immediately put people who have been displaced into a hotel room for their family. Starting tomorrow, 1,400 units from Airbnb will be available. Another 160 citizens have stepped up with HHFDC to provide uh, their houses to be shared. So it's just under 2,000 housing units are now available so we can get people sheltered. We signed a contract today with the Red Cross. We're grateful to them for their expertise. They'll be in partnership with us, FEMA, and the county to make sure everyone gets housed. If you have not been at one of the shelters, you'll go to Red Cross and you'll sign up there. These services, this shelter, these rooms will be free to people. And the resources will be covered through our disaster relief, through FEMA, through the state, through grants, Hawaii Community Foundation grants included. All of that's critically important. We've already placed 220 families into housing. And so you can see that the shelters are starting, starting to empty out. We're trying to be careful because there's a lot of needs that are also being met at those shelters, mental health care needs, people getting wounds uh, taken care of. But at all of these houses and apartments, hotel rooms, we'll be providing wraparound services. So that we want people to know about. We already anticipate at least 36 weeks of direct housing for individuals. It will probably go on much longer than that, just so people know. But we don't want people to think that they're going to get housed and suddenly be asked to leave. It will be in 30-day increments, which will be constantly re-upped. So people will get housed. As I shared earlier, the scale of destruction is incredible. So our hearts are broken even a little bit more than when we were together 48 hours ago with the extra fatalities. Also, you know that we're well over 2,200 structures that have been destroyed. 86% of them were residential. The disaster relief is here. You saw FEMA. You saw the Small Business Association. You've seen the outpouring of support. What I can tell you is this. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. As they go through all of the territories in Lahaina, 
they have to be very careful, very careful not to disrupt any of the homes there. So for those people who have walked into Lahaina because they really wanted to see, know that they are very likely walking on Evie, as the chief of police said the other day. That's why we're being so careful. We'll address other questions about how to drive in, how to get through. We know that it's frustrating, but this pace will accelerate. We'll go from stage zero, as the mayor and I discussed right before we came in here. Stage zero is getting through all of the properties where those who have passed are. When we get out of that, we'll be able to open the road completely. We'll be able to make everything a lot easier. So in the coming days, uh, we'll continue to give you these comprehensive updates. I want you to know we've also signed some additional emergency proclamations so that we can get other services to people, the most recent of which is to get health care for individuals. So a proclamation has been signed now by me so that people can get longer periods of their medications if they need them. We've also allowed outside providers, uh, physicians and nurses from outside the state to have licenses here in Hawaii and to practice. We'll be bringing hundreds and hundreds of mental health care workers into the state in partnership, not just with Red Cross, but all of our services at the state and county, because that's where a lot of the suffering is going to be. It's going to be mental health care needs that we need most. What I think I'll do is I'll basically pause there. I know you have a lot of questions about things like sirens uh, and the response. We'll have a lot of time for that today. But thank you so much for your patience, and as promised, we're here to continuously give you updates.